2023 was an absolutely incredible year for gaming, with releases like Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, all showing us what pushing boundaries and quality game dev can truly look like. But 2023 was also a year of absolute stinkers in gaming, bringing back one of my favorite subgenres from the past, shit borderline fucked up licensed games. Motivated primarily by meme Steam reviews, I wanted to take a look at the two worst defenders of the last year, Lord of the Rings Gollum and Skull Island Rise of Khan, just to see how deeply we really had scraped the bottom of the barrel. Now, all that being said, misery loves company, and in an effort to more evenly distribute the brain rot, I invited my good friend, fellow creator, and frequent collaborator, a sword bear, to join me in tackling the worst games of 2023. Fulfilling my duty as resident Lord of the Rings fanboy, I, Spooky Deer, being of soundish mind and spirit purchased with my own money Lord of the Rings Gollum. Post-release quality concerns notwithstanding, the Lord of the Rings Gollum is just an especially weird game to exist at all. I mean, just, just look at this guy. Who sat down in a boardroom and said, Yes, give me 20 hours of him. Despite my reservations, I buckled up and prepared my gamer powers to give Gollum the good old college try, and even getting to play Gollum in the first place ended up being a saga in and of itself, thanks in no small part to how just poorly optimized and pieced together this game is. <laughs> it crashed your OBS, dude. It took us two different painful attempts on separate days to even get our recording session off the ground because Gollum refused to play nicely with my game capture software at all. I am just astounded that Gollum, with its PlayStation 2 graphics and ray tracing, I'll have you know, there is ray tracing in this game. Um, is there right now? There, no, not right now. Absolutely no. Now, my PC isn't fresh off the factory floor, but it's still quite powerful. So can someone please explain to me why Gollum, Gollum, is the game that brought it to its knees? In order to even get the game to record and to screen share over to Swordbear so he could react to things in real time, I had to turn every setting down to its minimum worst option just to get things to hang on by a thread. The performance issues are still so bad that I can't even stream this game on my Twitch channel, which is something that I really wanted to do because I thought it'd be kind of funny. And while we're on that topic, I'd just like to point out how fucking funny it is to me that a game with such horrific optimization and a very sparse collection of graphical settings devotes two out of 12 options just to Gollum's hair. Why does this game exist? Why does his hair have a performance mode? Why does the game say it requires a 40 series GPU when it has the look, feel, and energy of a PlayStation 2 game? Sorry. Once we got the game to finally, you know, game, Sorty and I, surprisingly, and I hate to say it, actually found ourselves getting bought in. I'm looking at, at Gollum right now, and those pants are fitting pretty loose. I'm worried that they, he know, is. There is a lot of a sensor bar on this little. There guy. is a lot of opportunity to hang brain, and there is no brain hanging. So I don't know. I might be seeing some brain hanging. There's a is there some brain? Is there some brain hanging? It's questionable. Yeah, editor, uh, zoom and enhance. Zoom and enhance. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. 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 My sweet boy. My sweet boy. I feel like this game would go hard if I had ray tracing turned on. It would also fry my computer. You say this game, I think you mean this cutscene. Well, right. That cutscene looked kind of good. It wasn't bad, no. As far as like a lore dump, this isn't, I'm not mad at this yet. I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, right? Like that is my like credibility for speaking to this game. I'm not gonna lie, I would watch the hell out of a Lord of the Rings cartoon animated in this style. Yeah. Like storybook style. This yeah. this is not. I am enjoying this part. Did we have the wrong idea about this game all along? Because so far, once it started running, it was far exceeding our expectations. But then, after 20 minutes of watching cutscenes, I was given control of Gollum. Oh my God! Look at our boy. Why look at like that? look at our beautiful boy. Why Homie does he a ring light? Why does he have the fucking Robert Pattinson Batman makeup on right now? <laughs> I'm, I'm vengeance. Yeah. Oh god! Oh god! Oh my god! I promise I'm trying to control this as normally. Oh Jesus Christ! Okay. Um, <laughs> did you press the jump? Button? I, I I did press the jump button. That was that was a chosen input. Okay. Um. Oh my, oh God. 
All right, invisible wall. All right, You're well, let's... You're doing really good so far. <laughs> doing really... Look at how high he fucking jumps. Oh, hi yeah. And I just am not a fan of playing Tack and the Power of Juju in 2024. I just... I don't like it. He... I really don't... Oh, here we go. Jump. The jumping feels really bad. I just... I don't want to be Gollum. Please do not make me be Gollum. Why am I Gollum? Gollum as a game to me is just a little poop turd with tiny flecks of gold in it. A lot of the art direction, especially the environments, actually look kind of dope. Yeah. Oh! He wants to eat that thing. Yeah, he's like, damn. That thing's crazy. Like, again, when Gollum's not on the screen, the game looks kind of good. <laughs> is that an issue with the... With the graphics or is that an issue with Gollum's character design? I think it's an issue with Gollum's character design because like the, I think that this game has like a pretty consistent art style so far and this has been like it's been a cool environment to exist in. I'm trying to give this thing so much credit. I really am. Gollum also has pretty decent animation quality too. Yeah. It's it's not bad. It's but every other character model I saw during our playtime was is bad. Listen, I don't like looking at Gollum at all. Orcs are also weirdly smooth and they kind of look like the aliens from Signs. What should have been a show-stopping appearance from the Ringwraiths just falls apart like a wet paper towel. That he can he can sprint <laughs> up a wall, but he got winded swiping at a beetle. Oh shit. You are so fucked, dude. This, like, first-person camera angle is making me ill. Oh, shit. Why is this guy threatened by him? Oh, this is... Was that game over? The voice acting in this game is also just a mixed bag. I'm probably maybe too Andy circus pilled but I do not. I do not. I do not like this game's take on Gollum's speech at all. <laughs> oh, ew. What if it's friendly? He's Ooh. giving up on the flowers, huh? Okay. It wants us no harm, does it? Could be a spy. It could be. I also hate to say it, but calling the gameplay gameplay is a stretch. Mostly you just run through linear hallways and then platform poorly, or you do everybody's favorite activity. Auto fail stealth missions. Which that's kind of sick. Imagine having is, that on your desk. Right? Oh fuck! I think I failed. Yeah. That's it. That's the game over. That's the game over. You just get you get a little. Ch <laughs> you don't what? even get like you don't see him get hit. You don't get any context. It's just game yeah. over. Add additional frustration. The AI is so bad in those stealth segments that you can either get instant detected or you can walk right up to a group of enemies and just go completely unnoticed. What you guys looking at? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Oh, there it is. Oh, God. Oh, they hit him that time. Okay, he does get punched <laughs> yeah. in the least exciting way possible. Yes. Further from that, there are no meaningful ways to defend yourself. In the one hour of playtime, I choked exactly one orc to death in the least thrilling way. Oh, sneak up and hold Y for ambush. <gasps> Combat! Combat! Throttle him! Get, get throttled! Oh, no. Oh, no, I pressed the wrong button. No, get the, shit. Get the bushes, get the bushes, get the bushes, get the bushes. No! What the hell? Do I hold the button? Oh, I have to hold the button. You hold the button. Get absolutely choked. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. And then I threw a rock at another guy just to trigger a cutscene so we could watch him get eaten by Shelob the spider. It feels so bad. Okay. Look at the arc you have to put on that. Ugh. It is really it. janky. Great shot, though. Is he gonna... Oh, God, they're so... Ugh. We don't get to know. He's a little, he's a little too excited. About oh, that. God, okay. I fed him to old g -lub. Is this game having a ragnophobia mode? And while I know I've been ragging on it, 
there still is like a certain charm in this game. And if I was given it 20 years ago on my PlayStation 2, I just know for a fact that I would have played and enjoyed the hell out of it. But for $50 in the modern era, I could buy like two new packs of underwear and be both more comfortable and happier with my choices than playing another second of Lord of the Rings Gollum. Did you know that a new King Kong game was coming out? Because we didn't until weeks after Skull Island Rise of Kong released. Coming from the wonderful folks at Game Mill Entertainment who famously brought us other bangers like Frozen, Olaf's Quest, Street Outlaws. But something that I found interesting and that I think is also telling about Skull Island Rise of Kong, despite all these other games that Game Mill puts out, Rise of Kong is not listed on their website. <laughs> Steam user categories and reviews for Rise of Kong are so unhinged and compelling, we knew that we had to do a deeper dive on this game. So, enter resident guerrilla game expert, a sword bear. Eighty-five percent mostly negative. Charging thirty-five ninety-nine euro for this game is one of the most audacious things I've seen in my life. Holy heart, 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 is this bad? Things wrong with the game. Bad combat, bad visuals, opening of the game caused my GPU drivers to crash, <laughs> poor level design, boring boss fights, things good with the game. Mmm, monkey. Mm, monkey. <laughs> Now, before even launching into gameplay, Swordbear led me down a rabbit hole in the game files for Kong, and frankly, I am going to need somebody to make a documentary about the development of this just wildly bizarre game. You go into the files, and the entire game is stored in a folder that's just called Monkey. M-O-N-K-E. Monkey. And almost every file name you find in there is a shitpost. Fake loading screen stands out as one of my favorites. Kong.exe and then monkey folder. <laughs> Binary <laughs> content inside of it. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. They, they knew what they were doing. Okay, here is the... Movies? Fake loading.mp4? Fake loading? Wait, hold... Am I spoiling my <laughs> orchestra video clips? You might be. I just found the the ultimate. <laughs> it's just the it's just the loading screen. It's a video file. You send me the video file. In the in the in the folder, <laughs> I can just launch the video. <laughs> but also buried in the game files are just a folder of videos of an orchestra just absolutely shredding the fuck out of the game soundtrack, including wait, there's videos of. The orchestra playing the theme song? Play it. Yo, this music kind this of This goes hard. Okay, Kong, pop off! There's clearly quality stuff hidden away here, so... What is the game itself actually like? It it's uh it's 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 weird. It's very weird. And oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my Why god! Why is it so bad? <laughs> Hold on. What's happening? Oh What's no! What's happening? Oh, I'll send it to you. Don't worry. I'm I'm filming it on my phone camera <laughs> so you can see because OBS and Discord are not picking it up. Oh okay. wow. my god! Texture popping. Butter smooth though, I will say. I'm getting a cool 60. Yeah. Ooh, that jumping is worse than Gollum's. Uh. Mm, he's got you. Yeah, okay, there's so some weight to more, it. There's some weight to it. More control. The thing with the jump. Yeah. Is that you land and you stop for a minute. Ah, okay. But I think from what I saw of you playing, I think you have more control. I could do like almost a full ass speed yeah, in the air. Like, as jump. Give give us a little phase clan 360 real quick. What's So you just like do a 360 no scope. Yeah, I like that. Exactly. Yeah. I actually feel like I probably could platform okay. It just forces you to be patient. Yeah. Um, hey, is it spooky. Does this feel familiar to you? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. A wall full of ramen noodles. I'm changing the title of this video. I'm gonna say Gollum and Kong are the same game. <laughs> the same game. This is the same fucking just, game. It's a great name for the. Oh, we even found a flower at the There's top of the mountain. It's the same. It's the same game. game! 
What the fuck? Kong, at its core, is a beat-em-up game, but everything else it's doing just completely baffles me. The game is trying to serve as some sort of Batman-themed origin story for Kong, who isn't named Kong like how I'm named Spooky. He's a Kong like how a Magikarp is a Magikarp. There was an entire race of Kongs, you see. They were hunted to extinction by... I'm pretty sure it's a... I think that that's a dinosaur. I'm pretty sure that's a dinosaur. So, anyways, Velasa Joker kills Thomas and Martha Kong, and then you, Bruce Kong, are left to your own devices to, I guess, get really strong and then wander around smacking the shit out of various unrelated dinosaurs to exact your revenge. Oh, yeah, get absolutely... Oh, oh, right trigger, right trigger. Wait, right, what the fuck was that? What was that? Was that a finishing move? Everything, everything in this game graphically is completely bizarre. Why is Bruce Kong so expressive? Why, what is the sense of scale in this game? We have small trees, we have massive trees. Kong is, is he gorilla sized? Is he skyscraper sized? Is he somewhere in a mix of both? Is that a JPEG of a waterfall? I think it is. Adding to my personal bafflement, turning over control and becoming a viewer along for the ride in Kong was interesting, to say the least. And mine and Swordbear's experiences with Kong were vastly different because of this. To his shock and my dismay, Swordbear did actually find himself kind of enjoying playing Kong, which does give it one major advantage over Gollum. There is, at least, gameplay in this video game. Kill him. Glory kill! Glory kill! Woo! Let's go! At the buzzer, if another one's Yeah. Yep. Oh my god, there are. There's more. What? How many are there? This is- What on our- Oh my god! No, Whoa! two! <laughs> we recorded so much B-roll of Kong because Sorty was genuinely enjoying running around and figuring out the controls and just the general point of what he was being asked to do in this game. Where Gollum was a game of walking around and avoiding, Kong is a game of, albeit bad looking and feeling, running and action. As I sat by as a passive observer, I started to realize that Gollum and Kong actually have a lot more in common with each other other than just being two of the most maligned releases of the 2020s. I'm coining a term that I'm gonna call Gollum Core. Something about the introductory sequences of both Gollum and Kong, Red is weirdly similar. You're dropped into the game, you learn how to move and operate throughout the environment, and honestly, the story even followed kind of similar beats. Something happens that is triggering the character. See, I actually didn't write any of this, I'm being completely honest. I don't have a point. <laughs> I actually, I thought that I, I thought that I had more of a, I thought I had more of a point with this. They, they, they did have a lot in common. I'll be honest, I didn't, I didn't write anything about this. Gollum and Kong are fucking very similar games, uh, and I just don't have any... Uh, cognizant points that I can make because that would involve me thinking about these games for far too long. I know, I know, I know how I'm gonna... Now, I'm gonna admit, I did not find Kong particularly enthralling to watch, but at least things were happening on screen and Sorber was having some amount of enjoyment which, frankly, is more than I can say for my time spent playing Gollum. But as I sat by as a passive observer, I started thinking to myself, there has to be some point to all of this. What can, what can we learn or, or take away from the many hours we spent wallowing in mediocrity? It's the same, it's the same, same game! game! Was this art? Oh, oh my god, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh! Have we grown as people? Throttle him! <laughs> Get throttled. get throttled! Oh no! Oh no, I pressed the wrong button! Are we stronger or wiser for our time and trouble? Kill him! Glory kill! Glory kill! Woo! Let's go! Well, I don't know about all that, but what did we learn? I think, for me, my biggest takeaway is that any press is good press. Despite every review, Mimi or Sirius, telling us to steer clear of these games, reverse psychology had its way and it generated more sales on what were objectively poor purchases because we needed to see the train wreck with our own eyes. But here we are. Swordbear and I did have a lot of fun. I can't necessarily say you should spend your money on these, but there is actually something weirdly charming about having so bad it's good 
be back. In the same way that B-movies become cult classics, we had a shared experience, and while I can't say that I would regularly be spending $60 to $70 on these experiences, there is something almost pure about what these games did provide for us. Fun. I will criticize price points and optimization, but I also need to take a moment to recognize that it is a monumental effort to make a video game. And even though these are objectively rough and bad video games, I will not devalue the effort that goes into creating something so complex or the lessons learned that these developers are going to inevitably take on to their next projects. I've had fun memeing on these games, but real people spent real parts of their lives to make these games, and baffling as they are, I don't want to diminish that time and effort. At the end of the day, I'm a consumer, not a developer, and for all my gripes and jokes, I know that I couldn't make a fraction of these games. All right, my friends, well, you have made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and you want to see more, the easiest way to do that is to like this video and hit the subscribe button so you always get a notification when a new video drops. Uh, and let me know in the comments if you have a favorite So Bad It's Good game. And also, I would be remiss if I did not give Sword Bear a huge shout out and thank you for being a part of this video with me. Uh, I would not have gotten this off the ground without his help. And uh, he's also just very kind and handsome and funny. And all of his links are in the description down below. Uh, you should click on those um, so you get to know him as well. He's a fantastic creator, a very talented, talented individual. And uh, if you want to see more collaborations, you should click on this video next. We uh, worked with our Twitch chats to get a list of ingredients, which we then used to recreate Food Network's Chopped. Uh, but anyways, that's all I have for you. We'll see you again soon.